Thousands of years ago, humans recognized the not-so-intuitive phenomenon that the square of the hypotenuse of any right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Today, we refer to this relationship as the Pythagorean theorem. Anyone can take simple measurements to verify this fact, and most well-educated people know this to be true. But why is it true? How can we be sure that this holds for every right triangle? Well, we have to prove it. Many students are simply taught to accept the Pythagorean theorem as a rule of mathematics. But this rule was not created arbitrarily. Thousands of proofs exist to show that the very nature of a right triangle results in this relationship. The relationship was not invented, but rather observed. One of the most famous proofs comes from legendary Greek mathematician Euclid. Using only rules that he had previously proved to be true, he elegantly demonstrated, beyond doubt, that the Pythagorean theorem holds for every right triangle. This is an 800-year-old Arabic translation of Euclid's original text. His proof is straightforward and succinct, but can be difficult for students to internalize in its written format. In 1847, British engineer Oliver Bierne tried to change that by creating this visual representation of Euclid's proof. Using color associations and plain visual comparisons, Bjorn made the proof accessible to a much wider audience. His efforts serve as inspiration for the attempt I will now make to create an even more accessible visual representation of Euclid's proof using modern animation tools. Let's begin. We will start by stating the theorem. Lines A and B connect at a right or 90 degree angle, and line C, the hypotenuse, connects the two to complete our construction of a right triangle. Next, we square each of the sides. Our theorem, which we plan to prove, is that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now we'll take a look at the tools necessary for the proof. The first is that the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. This means that all triangles that share the same base and height, like these ones, have equal area. The next tool that we will use is that triangles which have two equal sides and an equal angle in between them are of equal area. Now on to our proof. Our first step is to draw a line perpendicular to line C from the intersections of lines A and B to split C squared into two rectangles. We will now show that the area of A squared is equal to the area of the left rectangle within C squared. To do this, we construct two additional triangles, which we will later use. These triangles are equal in area because they share sides A and C and have an equal angle in between them. Let's take a closer look. In order to show that the square is equal to the rectangle, we will show that half of the square is equal to half of the rectangle. Remember that our two triangles are equal to each other because they share two sides and an angle in between them. These two triangles are equal in area because they share the same base and height. These two triangles are equal as well for the same reason. By following the trail of equality we have now demonstrated, we can clearly see that the area of A squared is equal to the left rectangle within C squared. Using the exact same process, we can show that the area of B squared is equal to the area of the right rectangle within C squared. Now that we know A squared is equal to the left rectangle and B squared is equal to the right rectangle, we can add the two together to arrive at our original theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. 